Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete our application to Warner Pacific University. Before I log in, I want to make a note that I have once again made sure that I have any information that I need uh, to complete this section in front of me. So I'm ready to go and I will log in. And the first page that I'll come to is my dashboard. This has a list of all of the colleges and universities that I'm applying to using the Common Application, and it provides some information about where I'm at in that process. So for most of these, I'm in progress. You can see, though, that um, once I've submitted, it looks a little bit different. And so it gives me that information. When I scroll down, I can find Warner Pacific. This application is still in progress, and I click on Show More Details and discover where I am at in the process. I have completed the common application and this is the part of the application where all of the questions that um, I'm answering are going back to all of the colleges and universities. So it is the common part of the common application, but there are some questions specifically for Warner Pacific that I have not yet completed and I need to do that. So I'm gonna click on that button and it'll take me to the page where I can answer those questions. And on the left-hand side, this will look familiar. There is a menu of different headers that show where I'm at in the process. And as I go through this, it'll take me all the way through all of these for Warner Pacific. Now, these questions are being asked by Warner Pacific. The responses are going to go only to Warner Pacific. For some of these, the questions may look similar to other questions that you completed during uh, while working on supplements for other colleges and universities. That's okay. We're going to, yes, we do need to answer those questions again. We're answering those questions specifically as they relate to Warner Pacific and our application to that college. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll notice that some questions have a red asterisk or star. That again means that these are required questions. I won't be able to submit, submit my application until I've completed them. So we'll start with those. My student type, I will be a first year student and I am not an international student. So I'll go ahead and choose freshman. And I plan to enter the fall after I graduate and I'm planning to graduate in 2021. And so I will choose fall 2021. And now I have the option to choose what type of application I'm going to submit. Now at Warner Pacific, there's just one option that's rolling admission. And basically that means I submit my application, they review my application and get an answer back to me as soon as possible. I am planning to live on campus. And so I will go ahead and choose yes, but if you are not planning to live on campus, you can say no. So choose yes. And then they're wondering if I'm interested in any school specific fee waiver. So this is a fee waiver specifically from Warner Pacific, unrelated to things like a NACAC fee waiver or one that my counselor might have provided for me. And so if I had received a fee waiver from any of these options, I would choose that. But for me, I'm going to say that is not applicable. And they're asking if I am going to be submitting an external portfolio. So if I was into interested in the arts and wanted to share my work with the college, uh, I could do so. But for me, the answer is no. Let's see what happens if we click yes. Um, nothing. So that is that means that that's something that you'll need to follow up with to submit after you've submitted your application. But I'm going to go ahead and say no and click continue. Now they're interested in knowing what I would like to major in. And so I'm going to look at the options that are available here and scroll down. And I think I'm going to, I am not quite sure what I'd like to major in. I have some interests that I see on this list, but I think I'm going to go with undecided for now. And then it's telling me that I do need to choose an emphasis. So what am I interested in studying? And I think that of those things, I'm interested in social studies and I can click continue. The activity section is asking about what I would like to do when I arrive at Warner Pacific. So we've already provided information about activities that we've done in high school, uh, and now they're looking for information about what we would like to do. 
And the first question is about athletics. Do I plan to play a sport? And for me, the answer is no, which they're telling me I need to choose. I prefer to be a fan. Um, and I'll do that, but I also want to scroll down to show you that you can choose uh, any number of sports if you are interested in participating. And now they're interested in, okay, if not sports, what are you interested in participating in among the things that Warner Pacific has available? I can choose up to five. And I'm going to, I'm definitely interested in studying in another country at some point while I'm in school. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to add another activity and choose a second one that I'm interested in. And for me, I think that's the Latinx student organization. So I'm going to say yes to that. And I could add up to three more activities if I wanted. Contacts is about my relationship with the university. Um, have I previously applied? I have not, but let's look to see what happens if we say yes. So if you have previously applied, you're going to need to provide a date of when you applied previously to Warner Pacific. And that's so that they can attach your two application forms together so that they get a full picture of who you are as an applicant to the university. Um, but for me, the answer is no, so I will leave that there. And then this next question is about whether or not it's okay for them to contact me using a cell phone. So do I want them to send me texts or leave automated voicemails on my phone? Um, usually this would be for reminders about the application deadlines or things that might be missing from my application or other interesting or important things that I would like to know about Warner Pacific and my application. So I'm going to say yes, please do contact me that way. It's a good way to get in touch with me and I will include my phone number here. Okay, and continue. And family, they're interested in knowing whether or not I have any relatives who attended Warner Pacific. For me, the answer is no. I will click that, but let's take a look at what happens if we say yes. And what they're looking for is their first and last name, when they graduated, and their relationship to you. So if my mother, for example, had graduated from Warner Pacific, I would say Jennifer Miller graduated in 1998 and is my mother. But for me, the answer is no, and I will continue. These questions about disciplinary history are, just like all questions on an application, important to answer honestly. Your answers to these questions very likely won't mean that you cannot be admitted to the institution. However, if you answer questions dishonestly, then it is very likely that you will not be admitted. So the most important thing here is to answer these questions honestly. So the first one is about being expelled, suspended, or dismissed from a school since I was 17 years old, and the answer for me is no. If I click yes, I am going to need to provide some explanation of that. Um, and in an ideal world, I would also very likely include some information about what I learned from that experience. So um, for me, again, the answer is no. And so I don't have any further explanation. Um, so this one is about misdemeanors, felonies, or other crimes. And the answer for me is no. If I click yes, again, you're going to provide explanation and um, in a good, perfect world, what you have learned from that experience. For me, again, the answer is no, so I don't need to provide any uh, explanation. Um, I, I had no terms of a sentence, but this is a required question, so I'm going to go ahead and say, hmm, I'm going to choose no uh, to be able to answer this question and move on. Uh, because choosing yes provides an option where I need to provide additional information and I don't have additional information so I'm going to say no. Um, and then this is whether or not I authorize the university to do a criminal background check and I'm okay with that so I'll go ahead and say yes. You could say no and click continue. 
This next section, Recommenders and FERPA. FERPA is the Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Um, and this section is all about you giving permission to previous schools, so high schools and or any colleges that you've attended, to release your academic records to the colleges that you're applying to. So is it okay for them to send your transcripts? Is it okay for them to send letters of recommendation? This is giving permission for that. This section of the common application is a section that you will do for every college that you're applying to um, in the supplement section. And that when you do the first one, you will be asked to, when you do your first supplement, you'll be asked to do your FERPA release authorization. And once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. So I have already worked on other supplements, therefore I've already done my release authorization. Um, but if you haven't, and this is the first application supplement that you're working on, you will see uh, a button that allows you to look at the release authorization. And when you do that, you'll find some instructions that are very important that you read and that you understand. Uh, and so if you are not understanding everything you're reading, you'll want to find somebody who can help you to understand that. So you'll read, you'll under, uh, make sure you understand, and then you'll click that you have read and understand the release authorization. And again, this is, this is the opportunity for you to give permission for the high school and the college to share information for purposes of your application. Uh, on the next page, you're going to have an opportunity to make a decision about what you want to have happen with your letters of recommendation. So if somebody writes a letter of recommendation for you, you can choose to either see those in the future or have the right to see those in the future or waive your right to see them so that you will not be able to see them in the future. Um, and there is some good advice here about why you would want to choose one or the other. So you want to read that and make sure um, that you understand enough to be able to make that decision. When you click continue, you will have some more acknowledgements. One is to say that when you make this decision, you're making that decision for all of the colleges that you're applying to and also for any high schools or colleges that you've attended before, that you're giving permission for everybody to share that information. Then you'll make that decision about the recommendation letters, and so you'll choose whether or not to waive your right to see those recommendation letters. And then you'll check a box that says that you understand that when you make that decision, it is going to be true for all of the colleges and universities that you apply for to, and that the minute that you submit an application or somebody writes a letter of recommendation and submits that on your behalf, you can't change your mind about it. So you make your decision and then you don't have the opportunity to change your mind uh, after the process has started. So, uh, and that's in fact what has happened to me here. So I've already submitted an application so I'm no longer able to edit this. Then you'll sign with your full legal name, you'll date it and click OK, and then you will, you will be done and you won't have to do that for any additional um, supplements. The same thing is true for your recommendations. If you are required to provide um, information of, or recommendation letters, um, you will start that process of inviting people to recommend you or to write those letters of recommendation for you in the first supplement that you work on. And you'll have the opportunity to um, do a little bit more of that in each supplement, but you'll have already started that process and all the work that you do will carry forward into the next supplement. So for example, we were asked the first time that we filled this out to provide information about our counselor, and we did that, and so that shows up in this section. Um, and the information looks a lot like what is expected in the teacher button, so I'll show you that in a second. For teachers, we are not required to have any teacher recommendations for Warner Pacific, but we can choose up to three. Now, I've already asked a couple of teachers and entered them into the system, and so I can do one of two things. I can either choose one of these teachers and assign them to write this letter. Now, again, I don't have to do this. It's not required, but I can do it, so I'm going to. Um, and so I can assign that teacher, and he'll get a notice that the letter he writes is also going to go to Warner Pacific. Or... I could invite a whole new teacher, so somebody completely different, 
um, that I haven't already entered into the system, I can do that now. And I can provide their email address, what subject they teach me, their first and last name, and whether or not I want this teacher to have that letter go to Warner Pacific. And after I filled this out, I would click invite and the Common App system would send an email to let the teacher know that they are being requested to write that letter for me. Okay. At Warner Pacific, I have the option to also submit a letter from a, somebody other than an academic teacher. It is not required. It is optional. And it's the same thing. If I've already submitted somebody, I would choose that person here. And if I haven't already entered somebody or I want to enter a new person, I would invite them by providing that information, adding them, and it looks just like the teacher section. An advisor is somebody who doesn't submit any form, so no letters of recommendation. They don't submit the transcripts or the school report form, um, but I want them to be able to see my application because I'm going to ask them for some advice and assistance with it. And so I can invite them and they'll ask for just basically the email address and name. Um, and I can invite them and then they'll get noticed that they have permission to, to log in and see my application. Once I feel ready to move on from that, I'm ready to submit my application. Everything is complete. So I have three steps I need to take. One is to review my application. Then if there's a fee to apply, I need to pay that and then I will submit my application. So let's take a look. When I review my application, I am looking at a PDF of what is going to go to the college or university that I'm applying to. I can look at that PDF this way, or I can click Review PDF, and it will pop up in a much larger screen so that's a little bit easier to read. Either way, however I'm looking at it, I want to make sure to read through absolutely everything and make sure that the information that I've entered is accurate and correct and there are no typos um, and that it is exactly the way that I want it to look. If I discover that I've made a mistake and I need to change it, I will click out of here, go back to the application itself, fix the problem, come back to this screen and review again until I have reviewed the whole thing to make sure that it is accurate and complete. Once I've done that, I can click that I've reviewed the copy and press continue. And then we come to the payment page. Now I indicated early in the process that I was requesting an application fee waiver and so I don't need to submit. If you won't be using a fee waiver, when you click continue, you will pay. Uh, you'll be taken to a third party website. You'll pay the application fee and then need to come back here and press continue. And when you get to this page, you have the uh, opportunity to confirm everything, sign and submit. And so here, there are a number of things that you want to make sure that you read, you understand and agree with. So for each of these paragraphs, you're going to read through what it says, make sure that you understand and agree and click OK. And you'll do that for each of these. So read, understand, agree for each of these sections. And then you will sign your name your full legal name, you will date it and click submit. And when you do, you've applied to Warner Pacific University. Congratulations, 